my dear students assalamu alaikum and adab in this video we shall discuss the technical aspects of a steel beam and how the load carrying capacity how much superimposed load we can allow on the beam how much moment of resistance it will offer so starting with the steel beam a steel beam is a structure which looks something like this the steel beam supports load from a slab all the load of a slab is transferred to the beam and in course it is transferred to the column below it transfers it to the column which is supporting the beam now this steel beam has got three axes this is the x x axis which is the longitudinal one then we have y and z as the transverse axis the load on a steel beam is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis x x axis so a beam is a structural component which supports the load perpendicular to its longitudinal axis and transfers it to the supports at the ends of the beam now this beam has a clear span that is the span in between the two supports clear span without including the thickness of the support the the face to face distance of the supports between of, of a beam is the clear span of the beam then for design we take effective span where we calculate the bending moment this effective span is the center to center we take the center to center distance of the support as the effective span of the beam and we use this value for calculating the bending moment for the particular beam now this beam may simply be a joist is also known as a joist and roll steel joist which is a light sort of a beam where we may use ismbs for this particular section to be used as a joist this joist is otherwise a lighter section which does not support the load from other beams it does not act as a primary beam so it is a secondary beam sort of a thing then we have some heavy beams where we may use ishb we may use iswb and those beams are known as girders these girders are basically the primary beams which support the load from secondary beams also and then transfer it to the support spill there may be beams in a roof truss also in a roof truss between the two trusses in between the two trusses we have connecting members called purlins these purlins are also beams these purlins act as a beam in a roof truss then transverse to these purlins we have more members which later support the which form a grid and support the roofing material these are also beams which are known as common rafters so there can be purlins and common rafters which act as beam in a roof truss there may be joists or girders in a building which act as the beams in a building now we come to the structures what structures we mostly use for a beam the i section of this sort is the most common type of a structure which we use for a b well, we may use a single i section ismb ishb iswb as the case may be we may use a single i section if it provides the required moment of resist resistance it is supporting the bending moment so we may provide a single section something like this this is the overall depth of the beam which we denote by h top to bottom sometimes more moment of resistance is required hence one uh, single component may not be able to offer such moment of resistance we may use a built up section we may provide flange plates of required thicknesses for both the flanges we may strengthen this member by providing the flange plates one on each or two on each flange and hence increase the moment of resistance of this particular section sometimes even more strength is required we may form a built up section like this we may use two sections two joists 
two eye sections we may combine them together to act as a beam we may provide plates to connect them like this so this will be a built up section so this section may act as a beam which will provide us the required moment of resistance or we may even use channel sections for acting as a beam we may combine channel sections together to form a built up section and hence act as a beam connecting with plates at top and bottom so built up sections can be devised so to meet our requirements and such structures can be used to act as a beam then we come to certain technical aspects of a steel beam say one of its properties is known as section modulus it is represented by z section modulus section modulus this z is basically the ratio of moment of inertia to the extreme fiber distance i by y may be in for a steel beam we mostly take it in x x direction because it is the bending axis so i x x divided by y moment of inertia y is the extreme fiber distance extreme fiber say for example if we have a rectangle section this is the axis the rectangle section is b and d dimensions we have z modulus of section as i x x divided by y y is the extreme fiber distance from the neutral axis this is the neutral axis so y will be this distance extreme fiber distance so in this case y shall be equal to half of d d by 2 i x x for a rectangular section shall be b d cube by 12 y d by 2 this d will go this will become b d square this will become 6 so z x x for such a section shall be b d square by 6 this is the section modulus for a rectangular section the other sections i section channel section whatever we, we are using z is available in the uh, steel table for a single section if we need for a built up section if we have built the members together then z may be calculated from the basics we will have to calculate moment of inertia about x axis and for the built up section we will have to find out the uh, y value that is the extreme fiber distance and then we will have to calculate z for that particular member this is the section modulus for the particular beam then we have bending stress bending stress sigma b either in compression or it may be sigma bending in tension now this bending stress is developed because of the load acting on the member which leads to development of bending moment the bending moment there is an unbalanced moment at any section of the beam which will be known as the bending moment because of that bending moment certain stresses develop in all the sections of the beam these bending these stresses are cross sectional stresses known as the bending stresses so this bending stress in a beam can either be in tension or it can be in compression if this is the neutral axis say this is the neutral axis we may have bending stresses like this this may be bending stress in compression bending stress in tension now bending stresses we need to calculate we take the help of basic bending equation we have bending equation with us bending equation we have m upon i is equal to sigma divided by y is equal to e upon r this is the basic bending equation where m is the moment of resistance or the 
bending moment m is the bending moment or it is the moment of resistance i is the moment of inertia now here it is in about x x axis bending plane sigma is the bending stress this is the bending stress what we need to calculate y is the extreme fiber distance extreme fiber distance e is the modulus of elasticity or young's modulus and r is the radius of curvature okay now using this part of the equation we have load we will have bending moment from the properties we will have moment of inertia y will depend upon the member the depth of the member the built up member if we have built up member we will take the void to the uh, the extreme fiber distance from the neutral axis from this particular equation we will have bending stress is equal to m upon i multiplied by y this will be the bending stress or this will be depending upon the value of y if the values are same then sigma bc will be equal to sigma bt if the values of y will be different then it will be values will be different for tension as well as compression so from this equation we will have to find out this bending stress then bending stresses for a steel beam depend upon the type of the beam whether it is laterally supported or it is not laterally supported we will discuss that also depending upon that the values of this sigma bc can be taken from a table provided in the is code or we can take the maximum value for this particular bending stress the maximum value is 0.66 times the yield stress of steel so this is the maximum value in certain conditions and if those conditions are not met we will see that then we will have to reduce this particular value for a steel beam then after bending stress we have moment of resistance moment of resistance moment of resistance is basically the resistance which the steel beam will offer it will resist the bending moment and that resistance is basically the moment of resistance this moment of resistance is expected to be more or at least it shall be equal to the bending moment developed in the beam this moment of resistance shall be taken as zxx section modulus of the beam multiplied by the permissible bending stress in the beam so from the again the basic equation we had m upon i equal to the bending stress divided by y so this will be bending moment or moment of resistance will be i upon y multiplied by the bending stress i upon y multiplied by bending stress this i upon y we can write as the section modulus of the particular section so moment of resistance shall be zxx multiplied by sigma pc now this zxx for individual individual section this is available in the steel table we did not calculate it it is available in the steel table we can take it from the steel table bending stress we will see from the condition of the beam given we can find out the moment of resistance but if it is a built up section if we have used plates if we have combined the members together then we will have to go to the basics say i have put some plates which are not available in the steel table i have made a section like this in this case i will have to calculate z from the basic equation i x x upon y now y shall be the extreme fiber distance from the neutral axis this is the neutral axis so up to this point it is h by 2 or d by 2 and this is the thickness of the plate this shall be taken as y 
then Ixx will have to calculate Ixx for the built up member Ixx shall be Ixx of the say it's ISMB Ixx for this particular beam section plus Ixx of the plates provided Again, this value is available in the IS code IXX for ISMB. This we can take in the steel from the steel table. This is available in the steel table. IXX of plates we need to calculate. We'll have to provide BD cube by 12. Plus, this is the axis of the plates itself. So we are shifting this inertia by an amount H. So plus A into H square multiplied by number of plates we are providing. So it's 2. We'll have to multiply it by 2. So this will be IXX. This will be Y. We'll find out Z. And then multiply it by the permissible bending stress and we will find out the moment of resistance for the particular section. So this is the moment of resistance. Then we have lateral buckling. Lateral buckling. The compression flange of a steel beam has a tendency to buckle out of the plane of loading. So that compression flange needs to be supported so that this lateral buckling does not take place. Depending upon this lateral buckling, the steel beams are classified as laterally supported. Laterally supported beams. So these may be laterally supported beams or laterally restrained beams or if lateral supports are not provided then we will have laterally unsupported beam. or laterally unrestrained beam. Now laterally supported the compression flange is duly supported it will not buckle and hence in this case we may take sigma bending as 0.66 times the yield stress. Here we can take the full value, no need to reduce it as per the code of provisions. If it is laterally unsupported, then we will have to reduce the value for sigma PC. We cannot take it. 0.66 times FY will have to provide a reduced value. We will have to use a reduced value rather and that is to be taken from IS code. It depends upon the properties of the section the dimensions of the section, various ratios and we will have to take that value from IS code, the value for sigma BC and then use this sigma BC to calculate the moment of resistance for the particular beam. Now how we are going to provide a laterally supported beam? The compression flange of the beam is to be supported. Say this is the compression flange of the beam. If we are providing a laterally supported beam, then the compression flange may be embedded into the concrete slab. Say this is the slab portion. This is embedded inside the RCC portion of the slab. So this will not buckle, this will not buckle transverse in the transverse direction and hence can be treated as a laterally supported beam. This may be the case or if not so, the compression member, the compression flange can be supported by some other means also. If we have studs welded to the compression flange, these are the studs which are welded to the compression flange of the beam and this portion is embedded, these studs get embedded into the concrete slab. Even then it is laterally supported and we can take the benefit of 0.66 times FY as the bending stress. If we have a number of I sections, if we have a built up section, say we have a built up section like this, there are two to three members like this and we have to laterally support the section. Here also we can provide, we can provide braces like this. We can support the members with providing bracings and hence prevent the lateral buckling of the compression uh, flange for, of the particular beam and take help of 0.66 time we can take the benefit of full bending stress permissible 
in such conditions. Okay. Then we come to the load carrying capacity of the beam. How to calculate the load which can safely be allowed over the beam? So first of all, we analyze the data given. The data given should include the beam, type of the beam, the that is whether the beam is a simply supported beam, whether it is a cantilever beam, then we should have the span of the beam, then support thickness, support thickness over which the beam is supported, we should have the yield stress and the section used, sectional details which section has been used as the to act as a P. So if some data is missing we can appropriately assume that particular data. Then moving ahead we will take the help of steel table, we will see what data is available in the steel table for that particular beam. So we will refer the steel table. From steel table we can get area, we can get ZXX. If it is an individual member we can get ZXX from for the particular section from the steel table directly. If not so, we will take moment of inertia. If it is a built up section and it is not available in the steel table, we will calculate, we will uh, get this data, we will get the data of moment of inertia about XX axis for that particular member for that member from the steel table and then we will calculate this parameter ZXX from the basic equation. We can get the thicknesses, thickness of the flange, thickness of the web, all the data is available in the steel table. We can get that also from the steel table. After this, if we have now ZXX value with us either directly or we have calculated it, then we will see if the beam is a laterally supported one. If it is laterally supported then permissible bending stress we will take 0.66 times Fy directly. We will take maximum permissible bending stress as 0.66 times the yield stress of the C. Of or if it is laterally unsupported then sigma pc is to be taken from the IS code tables depending upon various parameters which we will have to calculate first we will select the appropriate table and calculate the sigma bc permissible bending stress for that particular condition so after we are having sigma bc with us we are having z with us value of section modulus with us we can go for the moment of resistance. The moment of resistance. So from our basic equation, moment of resistance is equal to the section modulus multiplied by the bending stress. We have ZXX with us, we have sigma BC, we can calculate moment of resistance of the particular section which it will offer the maximum moment of resistance for these conditions which the beam will offer. After calculating the moment of resistance, we have to go for load. We have to see what superimposed load we can safely allow on the structure. So again, we know that this moment of resistance shall be greater than or at least equal to the bending moment developed in the beam because of the loads acting over it. So if we take moment of resistance equal to the bending moment. Bending moment will depend upon the type of beam. If it is a simply supported beam, if it is a cantilever beam, if it is simply supported, it will be the total load acting in form of the UDL into L square divided by 8. This will be the maximum moment bending moment acting for a simply supported case. 
If it is a cantilever case, then it will be the intensity of the UDL W total into L square divided by 2. As the case may be, we will equate this bending moment equation with the moment of resistance which we already have the value with us. Say if it is WL squared by 8, it shall be equated to the moment of resistance what we have already calculated. Out of this, this L is the effective span. Effective span. Now this effective span L is clear span plus half the support thickness on one end plus half the support thickness on the other end in case it is a simply supported beam. This L shall be taken as clear span plus half the depth of beam if it is denoted by H, H by 2 or D by 2 if it is a cantilever beam. So again as the case may be we will take the value of L accordingly. Put it here. We have got moment of resistance value with us. We will come up with total load which can be allowed to act over the beam in form of the UDL. So after we get this total load, we now have total UDL in form of WT, so much of kilonewton per meter, which we can allow, which we have calculated from this particular equation. Then this total load is basically the dead load plus the superimposed load or the live load acting on the beam. So this total load is the combination of dead and live load or the superimposed load. This dead load will include the self weight of the beam self weight of the beam. The beam is given to us, the section is given, we will have the self weight with the self weight is available in the steel table. So we can put this value here, total we have from this we will find out the live load or the superimposed load that is the total UDL, total load minus the self weight or the dead load of the section. So this is going to be the safe load, safe UDL acting over the beam in kilonewton per meter units. So this is how we calculate the maximum load what we can allow over the, over the beam in form of the UD. So if we sum up, we see that steel beam may be cantilever beam, it may be a simply supported beam, depending upon that we will calculate the effective span for the particular beam. For the structures what the beam is composed of, we can take the data from steel table the important one data is the section modulus which is basically I upon Y, ratio of I upon Y. If it is available in the steel table, we can take it directly. If it is a built up section, then we calculate it from the basic equations. Then we have bending stress. Bending stress we take from the bending equation and that bending equation helps us to find out the moment of resistance also. Moment of resistance is bending stress multiplied by the section modulus. Now, bending stress has got a maximum limit of 0.66 times Fy, but the condition is that it can be used only when the lateral buckling is prevented, that is the compression flange of the beam is laterally supported. It can be supported by embedding the flange into the RCC slab or providing the shear studs which are embedded later on or in form of bracings. So, if it is not supported, then it is a laterally unsupported beam, unrestrained beam, then we will have to go to the tables provided in the IS, steel, uh, in the IS code to calculate but, uh, bending stress permissible. After that, when we have to determine the superimposed load which can be allowed on the beam, we analyze the data, what is provided to us, take the help of steel table, we go to the moment of resistance, we calculate moment of resistance which is Z into sigma BC. After calculating moment of resistance, we equate it to the bending moment, appropriate formula, what the case may be, and calculate the total load. After total load, we detect the self weight of the beam, which is again, we know the, uh, the weight of the structures from the steel table. We detect the self weight of the beam from the total load and come up with the superimposed load which can be allowed on the steel beam. Thank you.